Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing the TCS Prime interview experience. This interview happened yesterday only, that is on 11th June 2024, and this is of a CSC student. So make sure that you are watching this video in the end so that you can get to know the different different type of questions which are getting asked in the interview. Okay, and guys, lately from past 10 to 15 days, regularly I am uploading videos regarding TCS interviews. Okay, so earlier I uploaded videos for important interview questions for different different subjects. And from past two days, I am uploading the latest TCS interview experience. TCS data interview experience I have uploaded. Today, TCS prime interview experience I am covering. As well as in coming uh, today only, I will be posting ninja interview experience as well. So make sure that you hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel so that you can get to know the latest updates on the channel and you can get to know the latest things that are happening around TCS. And if you have any doubts regarding any of these things, you can you are free to ask any queries in the comment section. And guys, Recently only we prepared the notes for all the important interview subjects from which the questions can be asked in the Ninja Digital or Prime interviews. About that, that notes I will discuss later in this video. So guys now let's start this video and before starting the video please hit that like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel. So let's start this video. Okay so guys the date of the interview was 11th June 2024. The duration of the entire interview is 45 minutes. The branch of this student is CSC. Okay, so moving ahead, the first question, as you all know, will be tell me about yourself and you know what to include. As I have told you in different, different videos, you can include uh, your education background, your skills, your projects, your internships, uh, your extracurricular activities, all these things you can include in this particular answer and you will be good to go. Okay, moving ahead, the next question is which language you prefer. Again, you can either tell C++, Java, Python or any other language that you prefer. Moving ahead, what is the difference between stack and queues? So stack follows LIFO approach, that is last in first out, whereas queue follows uh, FIFO approach, that is first in first out. So let me just draw an example of stacks, one, two, three, four. This is how a stack looks, okay? And now let me draw an example of uh, queue. So this is what a queue looks. So this is a stack. So we uh, insert the elements in a stack from the top and remove also from the top only. So four. Once it is going in, then the first element that will be coming out of the stack is 4 only. Last in, first out. Opposite is that the queue that is the first in, first out. So we will be adding the elements from the back of the queue and we will be in a, uh, removing the elements from the front of the queue. So at the last came the 4 and at the first came the 1. So there is therefore, first in, first out principle is followed by queue. I hope this question is clear to you. Okay, so guys, the next question is what are AVL trees? So AVL trees are self-balancing binary search trees where height of the left and right subtree of any node differ by at most one. So let me just tell you with an example. So this, this is a tree. Okay, this is a tree. So what is the left height? Left height is one. What is the right height? Right height is two. What is the difference between them? It is one. Okay, so now what is a self-balancing binary tree? Self-balancing AVL tree. So what will happen if I try to insert the node here now? So the height of the left subtree is 1, height of the right subtree becomes 3. But see, here it is that here it is written that AVL trees are self-balancing binary trees where the heights of the left and right subtree is different by at most 1. It can be a height difference can be 0 and height difference can be 1 also. So what it will do, it will self-balance it. So how will it self-balance? So it will try to arrange itself. It will The node it will remove from here. And what it will do? It will add here. Now what is the height? Now height again becomes left 2. Oh, so right to left one so height again difference become one so this is what a self-balancing uh, binary search trees are these are able trees moving ahead to the next question what are complete binary trees so a complete binary tree is a binary tree in which all the level except last levels are fully filled and all the nodes are as far left as possible as far left as possible so let's suppose this tree so this will be a binary, uh, this will be a complete tree. Let me show you the example. So this is a binary, uh, this is a complete binary tree. See, the complete binary tree is a binary tree in which all the levels except possible last. So except the last level, this is the last level. Okay, this is the last level. Except this level, all the binary, uh, all the levels except last are fully filled. So till this level, so th these levels are all fully filled except the last level and the last level also and last level also all the nodes should be as left as possible so all the nodes are as left as possible in the last node so till the second last node all uh, nodes should have child and the last node should be as left as possible 
so this is what the complete binary tree is okay this is asked in the interview next is write a code for quick sort algorithm explain time complexity also so many of in many of the videos i have told you that sorting algorithms with their time complexity are a five star question these can be asked in any way not in tcs but in different different companies also these algorithms uh, sorting and searching algorithms are a five star question okay do prepare them with their time complexities uh, best case average case and worst case time complexities okay moving ahead explain the collection framework in detail so collection framework is in java so we have list we have queue we have set these are all interfaces so there are different different classes which implement these interfaces so there is a, a, a list interface is implemented by array list and link list okay queue interface uh, is implemented by priority queue set interface is uh, implemented by hash set or linked hash set now why do we use collection framework so collection framework gives us the built in functions built in functionalities that we need so it makes the code more readable and faster okay so everything we cannot implement from ourselves so therefore we use collection framework because it gives us the inbuilt methods to do our job so this is why we use collection framework and what is collection framework so these are all the collection frameworks so moving ahead what is the difference between a linked list and an array so again it's a very simple difference so linked list is uh, in linked list the uh, uh, what do you say the node uh, memory allocation is done at dynamically that is at run time okay nodes allocated dynamically whereas array arrays are static in nature so what will happen see if we will define an array if we will define an array so we will define like this for example uh, array name and we give us 10 size so it means that at compile time only we know that this array can have maximum of 10 values okay this is static way of defining an array whereas linked list see linked list what it does it is a combination of nodes so this is one node then uh, this node is connected to another node this node is connected to another node initially when the program starts we do not know that how many nodes a linked list can contain it is possible that at run time a new node is also added to this linked list so this is help this is what a dynamic means and arrays are static in nature okay uh, access time is on for both o, or in, in array sorry it is o1 because indexes are there in array there are no such indexes in linked list so i hope this difference is clear to you moving ahead what is a hash map and how it works so hash map is a simple thing see it is a uh, hash map is a data structure it is a data structure okay and it is a key value pair key value so in hash map there is a one key let's suppose a uh, name okay name then there is value let's suppose code then there is last name key then there is last name here value so if we now Uh, want to access what is the last name or what is the name? We just have to give the name to the hash map. So let's suppose hash map contains name as a let's suppose ch. Let dummy. Let's suppose it gives us dummy name. So dummy is the name of the hash map. So if we will have to uh, access the value of the name, so what we'll do? We'll write the name of the hash map, and we will uh, give the value of key here. So what is the value of key? Value of key is name, and corresponding we will get the result as code. so this is this operation cost us o of one time so searching in a hash map is a o of one time operation that is a constant operation so this is what the hash map is i hope this thing is clear to you next moving to the next question can key of a hash map be null so as i have just told you hash map is a key value pair so can a key can a key be null in hash map so answer is yes answer is yes and one more thing i forgot to mention that all the keys We mentioned here if there are one or two or thousands of the keys, all the name should be unique in hash map. All the unique name should be there in the hash map. Okay, keys cannot be duplicate here. So yeah, I hope this thing is clear to you. Moving to the next question is explain the difference between interface and abstract class. So again, the difference is very simple. Interface, uh, just a second. So uh, yeah, sorry. yeah difference between interface and abstract class so interface uh, what is an interface so interface contains abstract methods let's suppose run i know i hope you know what are abstract methods is uh, those methods in which the body of that method is not given while we are declaring it so in interfaces we only declare uh, we, we only declare the abstract methods there is run there is uh, play so these are just abstract methods so if in a interface if in a uh, 
in interface all the methods that we declare are abstract in nature whereas in abstract class whereas in abstract class we, what we can do we can declare abstract methods also but we can give we can declare non abstract methods also that is we can give the uh, uh, what you will say uh, give the body of this function let's suppose c out something 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 so here we have given the body of play and we have defined up uh, abstract uh, method as run so this is what the abstract class is and this is what the interface is so this is a major difference so i hope now these things are differences clear and in both these cases the objects of this interface and abstract class we cannot make okay moving ahead to the next question why default method was introduced in interface so see interfaces are like this as i have just now explained you that it contains only abstract methods and we should not we will not give any body of these methods so play was there run method was there and we are not giving any body here in the interfaces so the classes that that will implement this interface will give the body of these methods okay now they these are all public void these are all public void methods now we can declare default methods also in interface so we can give the keyword as default then we can uh, give the name of the method as let's suppose dummy is the name of the method for default methods we are allowed to give the body we are allowed to give the body in the interfaces okay so default method we are allowed to give the body in the interfaces whereas rest other methods like uh, normal uh, methods we are not allowed to give the body in the interface now why was it introduced to ensure the backward compatibility now see interface can be in a big organization an interface can be implemented by hundreds of classes okay so now if we want to give some common functionality to those classes we can simply declare default method in the interface and every class that is implementing that interface will automatically get this method will automatically get this method so this will ensure the backward compatibility when adding new methods to interface allow interface to have concrete method implementation so this is the second reason so i hope now the uh, reason is clear to you why default methods were introduced in interfaces okay moving to the next question what are wrapper classes so again it's a very simple question wrapper classes in java are classes that provide a way to use primitive data types as objects so int can be used as an object of integer char can be used as an object of character similarly boolean can be used as a object of boolean that is b capital okay so i hope this wrapper class is also clear to you now can you uh, next question was can you explain both of the projects you mentioned in your resume so again it's very important question as per the prime or detail interview is concerned many of the focus will be on your project section also but before moving ahead uh, in this particular uh, interview i would like you to know that recently only we have launched the notes for tcs important interview subjects okay so in this particular notes what we have we have around 10 pdfs comprising of these subjects that is c++ java python dbms sql coding questions and so on operating system and networking also so in each of these pdfs what we have we have the most commonly asked interview questions in tcs as well as some notes are also there okay so these are important interview questions come notes for different different subjects c++ also java also python also and so on so this is this will be very much handy for you at the when you are like revising at the last moment okay currently what is happening you are reading c++ from one link you are reading dbms from other other link you are reading coding questions from another link so this is all the resources i have clubbed into one different different pdfs are there so it will be very much helpful for you if you are preparing for your tcs interviews around 70 to 80 percent questions will be repeating from these pdfs only regarding these subjects i have like specifically designed uh, these uh, pdfs for tcs ninja detail and prime rules okay so i hope you uh, i hope this thing is clear to you this is as a, at a very feasible price of 99 rupees it will be not much to give but you will get a lot of return out of these pdfs i have like curated them specially for the interview purpose so all the buy links you can find in the description box and one more thing i want to add here that we are also taking mock interviews for tcs ninja detail and prime okay these slots are very much limited you can book your slot if you are not confident for your interviews all the links are again in the description box so do buy this notes because it will be very much handy for you just at a price of 99 and if you are not confident you can give us the mock interviews as well we are happy to take it all the links you will find in the description box and okay so moving ahead can you explain both of the projects you mentioned in your resume so uh, just a second 
So moving ahead, can you explain both of the projects you mentioned in your resume? So what do you people do? You people mention two to three projects in your resume and you just prepare one. So this is also a big mistake that many of you are facing. So what you have to do, anything that you are mentioning in your resume, whether it does, whether there are three to four projects also, then also you must have the understanding of each and every project. The interviewer can ask any project. How to explain the project in the interview? Again, I have made a dedicated video for that. I can give the link in the i button. Okay, you will find the link in the i button. Next question is how you got this idea. So you made a project. So how you got the, this idea? So again, this answer will depend on you that what motivated you to make this project. Okay. Next is was it a group project or a personal project? So again, many of you make minor or major projects and they are all group projects, but some of you also make personal projects also. So they are, they both are treated equally only. So don't worry if you have group project, mention group project. If you have done personal project, you can mention personal project. No issues. Next is what was your role in the project? So since this candidate's uh, project was a group project, so around four people were there in the group. So he was asked that what was your role in the project? So if you are making an application, then there are many things like front end is there, back end is there, database things are there, uh, connection between Docker, uh, Docker and like deploying of the apps are also there. So anything that you have done uh, as a part of your role, can you can describe anything that you have done for yourself. Okay. In this project, you can give the answer for it. Okay. I hope this question is clear to you. Next is any challenges you want to highlight that you faced again. Like when you are making a project, there are a lot of challenges. You have to like work in a team also. You know, uh, many of the things, many of the times your code is not working. Many of the times you get second thoughts about your idea. So all these are the challenges you can highlight to the interviewer. And again, the answer should also be there that how you overcame these challenges. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. Next is how are you planning to improve this project? So see. The projects are not that that you make one day and next day like you start working on another project. So there must be some idea that how you can grow this project and what business use case you can generate from that project. So work on that thing, work on like, like think about the project in a, that way that this is your business, how you can keep improving your business to generate more revenue or generate more uh, good features in that project. Okay. So I hope this question is clear to you. Next is what is a three tier architecture of an application? So simple three tiers are first is the UI layer on which the candidate logs in. Next is the business logic layer. So this is the uh, this is the layer in which our code runs. Next is a database layer where all the databases where all the messages or data is stored. This is again a simple question. Next is what is a data center? So again simple definition is that a data center is a facility that houses computer system and associated components providing essential infrastructure such as power, cooling and security to support. So similarly lot of database combines to make a data center. Okay, no big thing. Next is what is the difference between public, private and hybrid cloud. So again, uh, the difference is in the name only. So public cloud is available to all like in AWS, you can go and manage. Uh, you can go to AWS and create your own resources and you can access any of them can access you uh, that resources. Next is the private cloud. So inside like you make a private cloud in your company so that only the company people, only a specific group of people can access that cloud. So this is what a private cloud is. Next is a hybrid cloud. Again, the combination of both public and private clouds are uh, there. Okay. Next is what is latency. So again, why these questions are getting asked? These questions are related to project like deployments also. Okay. So these, these are like very common keywords in deployments. What is latency? So latency refers to the time it takes for data to travel from its source to its destination. So a user has clicked the button that he wants to this forms data. So how much time will it take after clicking? Uh, clicking button to reach the user. This is what a latency is in simple terms. Next question is explain the OSI model. So this is a networking question. So there are seven layers of uh, this model. You can explain each layer. Application layer is the first layer and physical layer is the last layer or like vice versa anything. Okay. So I hope this question also you have cleared. So all these type of questions, if you will like compare to my PDFs that I was showing earlier. So many of these things like around 60 to 70 percent of the questions are getting repeated. So therefore I am again saying I have made that notes for these interviews perspective only and I have covered almost all the commonly asked questions there. So you can check out them the notes also links are in the description box. Next is what is a firewall. So again you have made an application. You don't want that everyone should access that application. You want that your application should be uh, accessed by Indian users only. So for uh, outside users you can like make a firewall that okay this uh, these uh, IP addresses cannot access our application. So you can 
uh, you can do like this. Okay, this is what a firewall is. Next is what do you mean by DNS? So again, DNS is nothing but domain name system. So in real, the IP addresses are not in the form of name. For example, if you have written google.com, so this is your way of understanding things. This is a human way of understanding things. How a computer understands these things, it translates it to the corresponding IP address. Let's suppose 192.0.0.1. So what the, how this mapping of google.com is done to this particular web server, it is done using DNS. Okay, so this is like just a notebook of mapping that, okay, if you have typed google.com in backend, you will have to go to this IP address. So I hope this question is clear to you. Next is, why do we need databases? So again guys, if you are watching this video till the end and you are liking it, please hit that like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel because every like and subscribe gives us motivation for making such videos. Okay, and do write your queries if any in the comment section so that I can like cater them. Okay, and I can help you. Next is why do we need database? So answer is very simple so that we can store our data. We, because in large enterprises, there is a lot of customer data. So where will we, we will be storing them? In a database. And in database, we can easily access that data also. We can easily uh, obtain a business uh, business outcome also from the, that data. So this is all data is stored in a database. This is why we need it. Simple. Next is explain asset properties uh, and database. So it is atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. So again, I have like discussed many, many videos that what does these means? Just, okay, I hope this question is clear to you. Now the last question of the technical interview was what is the view in a database? So you, are, you must be like thinking that Okay, prime role interviews are very, uh, what you will say, very long. So answer is yes, because see, you are getting a 9 LPA package. So you can expect around 45 to 50 minutes of your interview. So there will be uh, questions from every subject. There is a possibility. There will be questions, coding questions also there can be. Okay, so be prepared for that. So what is the view in a database? So again, like it's a very commonly asked question. Just uh, you can read this question. Okay. So these were all the technical round questions. Now like coming to the managerial round questions and HR questions. So again, these are very important. Do not like uh, consider them that, okay, these will like, we will make the answers at that time only, but that at that time you will be nervous and you won't be able to form the answers. So, so just read these questions also before your interview. So first question is how will your ensure team spirit in your team? So again, keep in mind that all these situation based questions should be, should have a positive outcome from you. How will you ensure team spirit in your team? So again, you should give some examples. Next is what is your idea of a good work culture? How will you be an asset to the team you are working with? If there is a skill that is required for the project, will you be willing to learn it? Okay. All these questions give a positive answer only. The interviewer should understand that yes, this guy wants the job and he is capable of doing certain things. Okay. Next is why you want to join TCS? What do you think about joining TCS will help you achieve your goal? So again, all these questions are very common. They can be asked from you. And again, for MR and HR round questions also, I have discussed very commonly asked questions uh, of MR and HR also in these notes. So these notes are like your one-stop solution for preparing at the last moment or like just revising your things. Links you will find in the description box. Description box. Please hit that like button, subscribe button for this channel and do share this video among your friends also. Thank you for watching this video.